What's up guys? It's the trucking guy coming to bring you some content, man. I've been seeing a lot of guys talking about, you know, all the struggles with the high fuel prices and all the things that are going on right now. So I want to bring you some key tips that are going to help you guys be more successful, especially if you're in hot shop. Um, for a lot of the guys that I see online that are really crying the blues. Okay. So if you're limited and you want to remove limitations, you want to make more money, you want to do something different than the other guy. I tell this to my clients all the time is that if you're standing in the Walmart parking lot and there's a hundred people there and you're part of the 99, when someone goes up on say a, a load board to, to send out and bid for a load and 99 people there say they can do that load, right? They say, I have a load going from wherever to wherever and 99 people raise their hand and they can do that load. What does that do? That's you're in the competitiveness of just dropping the price and running it all the way to the ground. Because just like in the old school days on TV with shipping wars, you know, they would always have that, that TV show. Somebody's bidding, you know, 1300, 1400, uh, 1200, you know, all the way nine, 10, 11, whatever, trying to get the, the cheapest price. So that's not really somewhere you want to be. But imagine yourself being that one guy that when somebody comes and says, hey, I have this load and it's a hazmat load or it's a wide load or it's a heavy haul load or it requires a passport to get into Canada or whatever, you're going to have these other stipulations and the other 99% of people can't do that load, right? So what does that do then? If you're the only guy that raises his hand and says, I can do that load and he says, okay, what do you want to charge me to do that load? And you say a million dollars. Well, it might be your opportunity to make a million dollars and nobody else can even do that low because they don't have the ability to do it. So here's some key tips that you guys need to use in order to expand your business and remove limitations. Okay. Number one, we're going to go with get a hazmat endorsement. Okay. On your license. If you can, if you have felonies or whatever and you can't, that's one thing. But if you can, it's about 150 bucks. You go down and take a, you know, 25 question test at the DMV. You get fingerprinted. Uh, a few weeks later, they mail you your new license, right? with the hazmat endorsement on there. Um, the tanker endorsement, add that same thing. It's like a 20 question test. Uh, you pay your fee and they add it to your license right there. Usually at the DMV and give you your new ID at the same time. Um, Twit card. Okay. It's 125 bucks. Basically you call down, uh, and, and make an appointment and you go down and get fingerprinted. Um, they, they run a background check on you and they send you your Twit card. If everything comes back good, you know, it's a simple application. It's a very simple process, but this is going to allow you to get into the ports without an escort, which some ports will let you in with an escort, but it costs money. It's a pain in the ass. You get the Twit card, you can get in there and get out, especially if you're doing like equipment or you get into heavy haul or anything like that. You're going to be in the ports a lot to get things to come out. Um, mega ramps. For those of you guys that are looking at hot shot trailers, get mega ramps. You can load heavier equipment. Um, it's just a much better situation. It's going to give you availability to do more with your trailer. Okay. Um, Getting an air ride trailer um, is another bonus. I mean, it's right now the air ride trailers are kind of pricey, but if you can get a hold of one, it's definitely going to help you. I'd say probably give you a 10 to 15% increase in revenue just based on the fact that you're going to be able to get loads that require air light. A lot of generators, a lot of rooftop AC units, condensers, things like that do require air ride. Now, some loads like military loads and things, they want the truck to be air ride too. So you won't be able to get those loads. So just make sure that you're a little bit more... Uh, you know, lenient on not just booking everything that's air ride and saying, yes, I'm air ride on the truck and trailer because you'll show up and they won't load you. So make sure you just uh, stick with the air ride trailer stuff. Um, getting a 45, 48 or 53 foot trailer for you hot shot guys, that's one way to level up. So if you're going to go buy a trailer, you want to get into hot shot and you don't want to get into semi or you don't have the availability to get into a semi right now, Gator May, PJ, some of these guys make a 45 foot trailer, um, a 48 foot trailer and a 53 foot trailer. Um, you definitely want to get one of those if you have the ability to do it. Get it now. That way you can have access to, to better paying loads or to more freight. Um, the same as a semi because a lot of loads guys are light that are you know 18,000 pounds or whatever. And you'll be able to do those semi size loads on your trailer, which will increase your revenue, increase your rate per mile, increase your profitability. Now, you will have to take the bet off the truck unless you're buying like a 55 or 6,500 series truck that's already a cabin chassis. If you buy a 3,500 series truck, um, you're definitely going to take the bed off of the truck because you'll be over the 60 foot rule and the 65 foot rule in most states. Um, getting a winch on the trailer, guys. You can go down to Harbor Freight, pick up a winch for 500, 800 bucks. Um, you can get them at you know Tractor Supply, wherever. You can get a nice Warren winch for 1,200 or 2,000. Get the fancy one, whatever you want. But having a winch, there's a lot of loads, guys, that'll come up. It might be once a month, three times a month, whatever. But there's going to be that one time where something pays good money and it doesn't run or whatever, and you need a winch to winch it on. If you buy that winch, that 500 bucks is gonna pay you back tenfold. So just get a winch, put it on your trailer, put it on a credit card if you have to, whatever, and you're gonna get that money back, I promise you on that, okay? 
I can't tell you how many times when I was dispatching, loads would pop up, great paying load, and it needed a winch, and it'd be in the port or wherever, and I'd call my guy and say, you got a winch on your trailer? You willing to go get one? No. Okay, well, I have to find him something else, and maybe I, what I found him wasn't as good as that load. Um, number eight would be wide load education, learning about wide loads, learning how to do wide loads. I have videos on this, guys. I talk to you through consulting programs. A lot of people call me. That's one of the biggest, I think, benefits of consulting with me is learning how to do wide loads because when people call me, whether it be hotshot guys or guys that have a fleet and they're, they're having a lot of trouble getting the rates or making money, one of the first things that we try to do is get them into specialized loads, getting them into wide loads where they can make you know higher rates per mile. Um, and a lot of people just don't know how to do it. They're scared of it and they, they think that it takes a lot of you know, uh, uh, leg work and, and experience and it doesn't, you know, you guys can go out there with even uh, a non CDL setup and book a wide load as long as it's light enough, I guess. But, um, you know, we do them on hot shots all the time. And I know a ton of people who specialize in doing them, uh, with their hot shot setup. So wide loads are definitely going to increase your mile. You might have a load on the board for three bucks a mile, and then you see a wide load for five bucks a mile. I'd rather take that wide load. The permits are going to cost me 200 bucks, maybe depending on how many states it's going through. And we just increased to two, almost doubled our revenue on that one load by itself. Um, number nine would be um, use multiple load boards. I had a client call me the other day and he said, man, I only use truck stop. You know, um, there's brokers that like to use DAT. There's brokers that like to use truck stop um, or vice versa. Not everybody's gonna post that load on both load boards and not all, it's not always gonna populate on both load boards. So yes, truck stop does seem to have some days more freight for hot shots. Um, DAT has some other days. So just use both load boards, go back and forth. You might even use central dispatch if you're gonna piggyback some stuff with cars or put some partials, but you might even find a partial. I used to partial piecework all the time when I was dispatching for hot shots and I would do a load that came off a truck stop and then I would do another load that came off a of DAT and neither one of them was on the same, you know, one wasn't on the other one. So using multiple load boards, guys, you can even get the apps you are gonna do it on your phone. I recommend getting it through your computer and getting the premium versions because it's a live feed. You're gonna get those loads a little bit more uh, faster than you would if you just use your phone or an app on your phone. Um, so uh, number 10 would be an escort car certification. If you're getting into wide loads, learning more about escort cars and how they work. Uh, it's a weekend class, guys. You can get it in almost any state that you're in. Um, it'll give you really a good understanding of how escorts work, how pilot cars work, how oversized loads work, um, and kind of what's required. And then having that certification is going to also help you refer somebody else to be able to do it. Or it might be even a situation where your buddy gets a load, he needs an escort, and you can escort it, you know, with your pickup truck. You got a hot shot, you make it an escort. And now you're, you're in an area and you follow him, you know. Um, Let's see, uh, uh, another thing would be uh, 11 would be definitely having eight foot drop tarps. A lot of guys don't have tarps when they first start out or they have four foot tarps or six foot tarps or they just have one random tarp that's not, it, it's a square and it's not a drop tarp. Getting good eight foot drop tarps and blankets, tarp blankets, um, padding and stuff to be able to do tarp loads is really gonna uh, help you out as well. It is a pain in the ass, it is a lot of work, but it's gonna increase your uh, revenue, increase your rate per mile. Anything that you do specialize, Anything that you're willing to do that the next guy won't do is going to get you paid more money. Um, everybody thinks that trucking is just picking up stuff and dropping it off from point A to point B, but it's not. You're solving problems, logistical problems. The, the harder the problem is to solve, um, you're going to get paid for your, your effort. Um, another thing would be number 12 would be coil racks, getting coil racks. A lot of semi-trucks run coils and a lot of hotshot guys don't think about running coils. But we run a lot of coils, guys. They, they range from... Um, you know, small, light, 10,000, 5,000, 15,000 pound coils that uh, you need coil racks for and you can't get that low without coil racks. So go ahead and having some coil racks on your truck and having it in your equipment, you know, arsenal is definitely going to help you get, uh, open up that availability and remove limitations and get you some more freight, uh, better paying freight. You know, usually if it's a stainless or copper or something crazy, you can get paid some good money on that. Um, number 13, pipe stakes, especially going, if you're running Houston a lot or running pipe yards or some of these places where they do a lot of pipe, you're going to have to have, uh, pipe stakes. A lot of the yards won't let you in without pipe stakes. I'm sure if you guys have been doing any length of time that you've called around and tried to get some loads and they said pipe stakes required, you didn't have any. Um, there's a few people that make them. If you go on Facebook and Instagram and stuff on marketplace that in, in Texas and different places, there's guys that make them and they'll actually ship them to you or you can stop by and pick them up. They're reasonably priced. But a pipe stake is, is definitely something you want to have. I'd say get like maybe eight, four for each side. Uh, get four or five foot pipe stakes. That way you can get into some of these facilities and get that pipe. And some of that stuff pays three, four bucks a mile. 
Um, number 14, obviously, is kind of a given. Dunnage, if you're gonna do flatbed, you need dunnage. You need a dunnage rack and you need to carry dunnage, which is basically four by fours, for those of you who don't know, that goes underneath the loads to keep the load lifted up so the forklifts can get underneath of it. Um, let's see, 15, a passport, guys. Go ahead and get in your passport now so that you can uh, take loads to Canada if an opportunity arises or you know take a load somewhere that uh, is gonna you know benefit you and maybe it pays really good money or if those of you that are looking to go to Canada or experience what it's like to go to Canada, um, get your passport. Um, get it now because that's kind of a lengthy process, right? So if you get it now, you know, in a couple months, you'll have all these things. If you do this whole list and just go through everything, two months, it'll be a completely different picture. You will have painted yourself in a completely different avenue and a completely different sector that you'll be able to really make some money, okay? Um, number 16 would definitely be 14-foot uh, aluminum ramps. Um, it, it's something that if you're going to do cars, low-profile cars like, you know, Corvettes, uh, Beamers, Ferraris, things like that, they can't go up mega ramps. They can't get on the trailer. So if you have the 14 foot, kind of gives it a steep incline uh, ramps, then you can get a lot of those cars up on the trailer. Uh, if you wanting to do that type of freight, if you can get some customers that are willing to pay good, or maybe you get a good partial in the front, you go on central dispatch if you get set up with them and you got the insurance requirements and you add a car to the back that pays another thousand dollars or whatever to help you know partial it out together, right? Um, number 17 would obviously be another given chains and binders. I have a lot of guys call me, they've got four chains and binders or they don't have any at all. All they have is straps. Having chains and binders is definitely going to eliminate a lot of problems. You want to get 10, 12, 14, many as you can, because sometimes there'll be loads that need a bunch of chains. Um, and number 18 is the biggest one. Uh, the little bonus there is get direct customers. Um, there's more content on how to do that. You can check out my dispatch class that's coming out. Um, I have several different things. You can follow me at consultthetruckingguy.com, Instagram at the Real Trucking Guy, Facebook at the Trucking Guy. Uh, we'd be glad to help you. So if you're looking for any help, that's where you can find us. But that's about 18 key tips that'll help you get to the next level and start making money now. Peace.